Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the Yale number PD-534. This is a large format uh, removable core cylinder. This is a Yale-specific piece of equipment. This is a padlock is what it is. Yale has been in the lock business since the middle of the 19th century. That is not an exaggeration. I believe Polk was president when they started. Linus Yale Sr. was, um, I forget what his primary career was, but he was, he may have been just a lock maker is what he may have been. His son, Linus Yale, Linus Yale Jr. invented the modern pin tumbler cylinder that we all use 170 years later on a daily basis. He didn't invent it. Um, the Egyptians basically had the concept 4,000 years ago. And I don't know if Linus Yale Jr. you know, researched the Egyptian um, lock design, although it would be hard to believe that he didn't because of the absolute similarities of pin tumblers. Um, and that, that's a, that is a paradigm shift in the evolution of the lock set when that pin tumbler cylinder was used um, versus the standard of the day, which would have been a warded lock or a lever tumbler cylinder. Permitted substantially greater security long term um, compared to the technology of the day. And going through the decades and century and a half plus later, that same foundation of what was refined most likely from the Egyptian design uh, is now used in its identical concept, but used in such ways to have absolute or near absolute security over a door with very uh, complicated multiple shear lines with different concepts and technologies, restricted patented protected keyways, uh, etc. So the name Yale is quite the thoroughbred when it comes to the lock industry. Yale Padlocks is its own little universe in itself, a company quite famous for auxiliary locks, uh, namely Padlocks. This is the PD-534, it's less cylinder. This is LFIC, large format interchangeable core. Uh, you have small format and large format. Uh, small format is a name synonymous with best and its clones, Arrow, Falcon, and countless others. Then you have large format, which is synonymous with um, Yale, Corbin, Russwin, Sargent, Schlag, and so on. Schlag has their own variant of large format. They call it full size interchangeable core, but it's large format. It's not small format. And this is a large format core. There is a link below this video to a document called Cut Sheet from the manufacturer. There's also a link to the product brochure. The Cut Sheet is a tear page out of the product brochure. The product brochure will allow you to go over all things auxiliary lock uh, related from Yale, cabinet locks, deadlocks, and padlocks. So do familiarize yourself with that catalog if you're looking for an overview. The document that will apply to this video, of course, will be just the cut sheet. And from that cut sheet, you can see the column of all of the part numbers and how they change based on, first of all, the material type. If you're dealing with a Molly Bednam steel shackle or a brass shackle, uh, your part number is going to change. This is the PD-534. And let's go through those columns. See the column, uh, we're dealing with a, with a Molly Bednam steel shackle. Then the description column, it's LFIC. And you'll see from there, they have three options. Um, all of the cylinders will certainly be removable. Um, They can also do small format as well in addition to the large format. So this is going to take a Yale large format. This will take a fixed Yale core. Then this will take a small format. If you needed to run Best or Falcon or Arrow or any of their clones through it, they can manufacture that part number. So when you look at the PD-534 area of the LFIC, what you're now seeing really is the difference in the vertical clearance. And this is, of course, the 1 and a 16th vertical clearance. I'm holding this sideways to better see the vertical clearance. 1 and a 16th. This will have a diameter of the S value, which they're saying is 3 eighths. Let's see what this, the teller of truth 
says about three eighths. Point three seven five, so close to three eighths. Very close. Point three seven five is what this is. Three eighths. Uh, it has an overall height. They're telling us of three and three quarter, which is the H dimension. Hold it upside down. Three and three quarter. That's spot on. Width of the body one and fifteen sixteenths. Thickness of the body about thirty one. Uh, about thirty uh, fifteen sixteenths. I'd say fifteen sixteenths. Um, the R value we've done the three quarter inch. The sh shackle clearance and the width three quarter. I can without damaging the driver. I can open this padlock up. Just needed two hands on that, just manipulating that driver down there to get the tailpiece to turn to release the shackle. Okay, ball bearing down there, it's going to fit into that notch that's here. That's how padlocks generally work. And when you turn the key, which will turn the cylinder and then the tailpiece or the cam or the driver, it basically permits an area by which that ball bearing can then scooch out of the way so that when the spring in the shackle is engaged, it will push that up. That's how those work, and it's a standard function of items like this. Okay. A couple of other options to mention: rust resistant with a chrome finish. This shackle. Um, two hardened steel balls. There is actually one over here as well. A little bit of stage fright, I guess. Um, there's another one that will be inside of here. So the point of that is when you are making this resistant to attack, you know, an old thing that people used to do in high schools is take the shirt and put it through the shackle and then severely yank on the padlock. And yeah, it's going to open because you're breaking the padlock. Having two bearings, you know, hardened steel bearings inside of there is what's going to resist that sort of attack. I don't know what the pull strength or the shear strength of that would be, I would guess it to be quite substantial. And you can see that optional shackles with a 2 inch or 3 inch vertical clearance are available. Optional 9 inch chains around the cl uh, with clevis around the shackle or riveted to the case to order padlocks uh, with a clevis uh, riveted to the shackle or around the shackle or riveted to the case. Um, you can see how the part number would change. We would obviously quote those for you. And of course, the purpose of a chain is to simply help keep the padlock close to the equipment, whatever you're locking with. You know, you might hook that on your belt and then walk away with a padlock on your hip. I, I know, I, actually, I've done it. Um, I forgot to lock. Where's the padlock? Where'd the padlock go? It's on my hip. So, you know, that option is available as well. The second page of the catalog talks about the um, pin, the cylinder options. And as we look at page one of the catalog, this is a PD-534, so that is specifically going to be a seven-pin uh, cylinder. Seven-pin cylinders are very common. Um, not nearly as common, of course, as six-pin, but seven-pin absolutely exists. Uh, you're going to find seven pin cylinders used in lots of applications, especially larger keying systems where they need that seventh chamber so as to permit the ability to derive a substantially greater and ac actually an exponentially greater amount of theoretical keys in the system. Um, so the references to those cylinders that are going to work in their large format and the small format. I can do that in a Yale key mark as well in that small format. 
Fixed core, available in 6-pin only, furnished with Yale 1801 standard cylinders for easy rekeying in the field. Um, and you can order them less cylinder. This obviously was provided less cylinder. Padlocks provide, provided less cylinder are furnished with cylind cylinder sleeve and adapter. So the bottom line is, if you want a fixed core, it's still going to work in the large format preparation, but then there is an adapter sleeve that's going to slide inside of there. You don't have to have a Yale padlock with interchangeable core. You can have a standard fixed core, and you're going to get the componentry necessary for that. And you can do it in a standard Yale keyway. You can do it in a security or a key mark or a Schlage C. They can even set that up for you as a Schlage C keyway as well. Okay. The rest of this video is really going to deal with how to service this padlock. Um, this can be, the shackle can be removed. Uh, there is this access hole for a set screw back here. It's not going to help you do anything by removing that. It doesn't defeat the padlock whatsoever. Um, in fact, not even close to that. There are access holes to be able to help lift that shackle should you need to. Um, let's take a look. Okay, so the way that this padlock works is you have this pin that's here, um, and that little set screw, that does need to be removed because it will allow the padlock to ultimately be removed from the shackle body. Um, So it, it's, it, it permits access to remove the shackle. There is a spring inside of here. There is a uh, ball bearing inside of here. And the purpose is, and the problem is that according to Yale, they don't believe that they sell just the shackles. So access to the shackle is obviously for manufacturing purposes. Um, they didn't believe that the spring or the shackle was available as separate items, nor do they have a technical drawing showing how this all works, but we can kind of get through it. Um, we're going to remove that pin, which is going to be a, I think a 3 16 Allen wrench. So I'm going to remove the pin. And that absolutely allows the shackle to be relieved or to have the spring bias removed because there is a profile in the shackle that this pin keeps restrained um, to a certain height. Now at this point, it will come out if I were to um, permit the ball bearing to move. And the way in which to do that, you're going to get down there and remove that screw. I have a pH 1, number 1 Phillips. Um, it's going to be a smaller than a number 1. That's a really small screw. I'm going to make sure that I not to lose it. Didn't quite come out. Okay. So it will come out with the driver and with the plate, I'm not sure what we'd call this disc. Okay. Now looking inside of there, you can see the linkage mechanism, that pie-shaped piece that's going to, when the padlock, when the key turns the cylinder plug, it turns the cam, it's going to force this driver to communicate through to the inner mechanism, and that's what's going to permit the ball bearings room to move. Uh, well, in this case, at this point, I've got one, bear, one ball bearing removed, um, but when I do it even further, I'm going to permit the shackle to come out. Um, and, of course, it is the same scenario where you just need to get in there and turn. And it is under spring tension. Turn the inside of the unit. And then the shackle comes out. And all I'm doing is just emulating with that screwdriver, 
just putting some movement so that I can clear the unit, uh, clear the area for the ball bearing to be relieved that's there, so that this can come out. Um, why you would service it if you can't get another shackle, I'm not quite sure, but obviously for the manufacturing of the item, they need to do it this way. So to put it all back together, I need to, of course, give myself the ability to permit that shackle to re-enter. Okay, again, turning that cam. Now at this point, I can low, I can, I can, not putting it back in order, I've got to bring that shackle down a little bit so I can get this pin back in. I'm just going to tighten that up. Okay, now the padlock's not going to move anywhere other than where it needs to go. Then at this point, it's a game of getting those pieces dropped back down there. And I'm just going to drop it back down there. And then with my wonder tool, get it put back in place. It would help if I was putting it in the proper side down. <laughs> I don't do this often. Um, got that place back down there. I'm going to drop this plate down there and then just manipulate it into the orientation that I need. And then attempting, of course, not to disturb the piece that I've already put in there. Got both of those pieces set down there. I'm going to take that screwdriver. I'm going to bring my little screw. Um, an old fellow's not old, but he has been a locksmith customer of mine. He has been a, a full-time locksmith, and he is he is a locksmith. A lot of people use the term locksmith, um, he's a locksmith. He understands the theory behind what he's doing very well. A uh, trick he taught me, and I'm not doing it right now because I'm not at my key bench, is to have a amount of cloth stapled to the front, and this is my desk, to drape over your lamp. So any parts that, exp that move on you. So I've got that screw put back in there. Okay, make sure it's tight. Back in business. Okay. Anyway, showing you a video of a padlock and talking about his options. Sure, that's cool. Um, kind of wanted to show how it would be assembled as well, um, which is hopefully of more value than just, here's a padlock. Finally, there is a link below this video to the manufacturer's page where you can pull up not only all of the Yale products that we sell, but a link to the manufacturer's website, as well as a link to the full product catalog. This was a redo for Yale. They did send us a bunch of PD524s, which is the six pin version. Um, and then of course, recognized the mistake and have corrected it. And there you go. Very good company, Yale. Um, you know, the first name in hardware. Somebody has that as their tagline. I don't know if it's Yale, but it really <laughs> applies to them with the fact that they basically, that company is responsible for inventing the pin tumbler cylinder. It is, if you are involved, if you are interested in locksmithing at all, uh, you could easily find countless references to Le Linus Yale Jr. Him and his father were never in business together, but they, um, they were certainly in business at the same time. And I don't believe that there was any reason they weren't in business together. Maybe just, um, you know, why would they be in business? I think the father was doing a different kind of aspect and the son was going in his own direction. And I know that he had um, uh, a gentleman by the name of Henry Town that was a f uh, seminal figure in the history of the Yale company in terms of helping evolve the company into what they were doing. 
The link below this video to the manufacturer's page will not only show you all the Yale products we sell, a link to the manufacturer's website, the current catalog, but some quite old historical archival catalogs are there as well. Just interesting stuff. Any questions on the PD-534 padlock or any other Yale product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.